This is a film about Land Rover driving techniques and is intended to inspire the confidence of the driver in himself and in his vehicle. With a thorough knowledge of the principles involved, backed by plenty of practical experience, he'll be able to prove the outstanding ability of the Land Rover to go almost anywhere. Maybe you will already know the answers to most of the problems. But there might be something new to learn, something that will help. Let's start with a look at a basic Land Rover and its simple drive selection. Four-wheel drive, high range, is obtained by pushing down the lever with the yellow knob. To cancel, stop the vehicle, pull back the red knob, and then push it forward, springing the yellow knob back into normal position. For low range, again stop the vehicle and pull back the red knob, which also engages four-wheel drive automatically. Before attempting to cross difficult country, stop and make a careful assessment of the obstacles ahead and plan the route accordingly. Second gear, low range, is suitable for rough conditions and should be held throughout the crossing. Don't be heavy footed. Use the accelerator pedal with care and avoid sudden power surges that cause wheel spin. Keep your foot off the clutch. It causes excessive wear and it's dangerous. A sudden bump, the clutch depressed and the vehicle goes out of control. Wheel slip is another cause of loss of control. In conditions where one wheel on each axle loses grip, the action of the differential allows these two wheels to spin. This, in turn, prevents the other pair of wheels from transmitting traction. Result, complete immobility. The answer is to assess the correct angle of approach by selecting a path where the ground surface under opposite wheels is similar. This avoids any of the wheels lifting off the ground and maintains traction throughout. Another obstacle where the correct angle of approach is vital. Tackle it square on, and both front wheels drop into an impossible situation. The correct angle will enable each wheel to cross the gap separately. As the front wheels cross, the rear wheels maintain full traction until the front ones take over on the opposite bank. Although many rough tracks can be negotiated in two-wheel drive high range, do not hesitate to use four-wheel drive where excessive suspension movement could cause wheel spin. If the track becomes more severe, a change to low range will avoid clutch slip and give more control. Be constantly on the lookout for changing conditions. Make sure there is sufficient ground clearance under the chassis and steer selectively, avoiding deep ruts and sudden changes in slope. In a boulder-strewn situation like this, choose a path where the ground condition under each wheel is similar to that of the opposite wheel of the same axle. Here again, it is the selection of the best angle of approach, which will prevent wheels being lifted off the ground. Even the most experienced drivers take extra care when traversing steep side slopes. A small obstacle or a depression could increase the angle of tilt beyond the safety limit. Be sure, never take a risk.
stand. And another set of problems. Try to keep moving. Do not change your mind once the crossing has started. Remember, do not change gear. The moment the clutch is disengaged, there'll be drag at the wheels, and there you will stop, sinking slowly into the sand. And you won't be able to accelerate out of it. Sudden bursts of power cause the wheels to spin, and the vehicle digs deeper into trouble. Reduced tire pressures can help, but to avoid trouble, always select the right gear in four-wheel drive, be gentle with the accelerator, and don't change gear. After the sand, into the water. First check that the clutch housing drain plug is in position. And then slacken the fan belt to prevent saturation of the electrical system. The careful driver will make sure that the maximum fording depth of the water does not exceed about 18 inches. In metric, about 45 centimeters. Travel slowly in a low gear, but maintain sufficient throttle to avoid stalling when the exhaust pipe is underwater. Make sure the brakes are dried out immediately by driving a short distance with the foot brake applied. The heat generated will soon dry out any water inside the brake drums. And remember to tighten the fan belt. On cross-country operation, a waterlogged section, stop and again plan the approach. The visual check, no large obstacles. A fairly fast run may be the answer here. With sufficient speed, the forward momentum will overcome the drag, reducing the traction needed from the wheels. In marshy conditions, as with soft sand, reduced tire pressures increase the contact area with the ground. This helps to increase traction and reduces the tendency for sinking. must be reinflated to normal pressures as soon as conditions allow. Down a steep slope, never touch the brake. Use the engine to slow down the Land Rover. Brake and this happens, out of control. When climbing a slippery gradient, use the highest possible gear as maximum torque is reached before maximum revs. Traction is often improved by lifting off power just before loss of forward motion. When it's dry, much steeper slopes can be tackled. for the descent, into low ratio, red lever of course, and first gear engaged. Whilst descending, keep your foot off the accelerator. Don't touch the brake or clutch. Just let the engine do the braking. expert can sometimes miscalculate. In this case, the approach was too slow. No need to panic, just hold it on the foot brake. Next, apply the handbrake and engage reverse gear. 
Again, hold with the foot brake whilst the handbrake is released. Then reverse down the slope using the engine to provide the braking retardation. Now the same slope with a longer run and a faster approach. Increased momentum is the answer and a successful ascent is achieved. In higher country, it is well to remember that altitude affects the performance of all motor vehicles with loss of power and cooling efficiency. Since 1948 and a million vehicles later, the Land Rover is still the number one choice. Learn to master it and the success of the Land Rover will become your success. Avoid such disasters as these embarrassing results of poor driving technique. A Land Rover immobilized is a moral defeat for the driver and bad publicity for the vehicle. Always plan your attack. Become an expert. It's up to you to do justice to your Land Rover. The successful demonstration will do much more than words. Join the professional.